everyone. Welcome to my lecture on the gluteal region and posterior thigh. Today we'll be reviewing the musculoskeletal anatomy specifically. My name is Jung Yoon and I'm a fourth year medical student. So today's learning objectives are to learn about the muscles in the gluteal region and posterior thigh, learn about the neurovascular structures in the gluteal and posterior thigh region, and to learn about the clinical correlations of gluteal and posterior thigh muscles. So in this diagram, medically we refer to the hip as this portion of the body. We refer buttocks to this region of the human body and the thigh as this region of the human body. And posteriorly, you can feel the level of the iliac crest. And laterally, we have the greater trochanter of the fem femur. And the ischial tuberosity is the bone that you used to sit on. Now, if we look at the diagram on the right side, uh, we can look at the ligaments of the hip region. The ligaments to note are the sacred tuberous ligament that extends from the coccyx to the ischial tuberosity and the sacred spinous ligament which is here, that separates the greater sciatic foramen from the lesser sciatic foramen. And these two foramen are important clinically because a lot of important nerves and muscles pass through this region. For example, the greater sciatic foramen is where the sciatic nerve passes, and sciatic nerve is the biggest nerve in the human body, and it supplies a lot of the legs. And the sciatic foramen, which is harder to see on this diagram, is where the pudendal nerve passes. And the pudendal nerve is the nerve that supplies most of the perineum. And the posterior lateral side of the ilium is what provides the attachments for gluteus muscles, the gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. And the ischial tuberosity, which is here, is the attachments for hamstring muscles, which we'll review today. In terms of gluteus muscles, we have the gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. The gluteus maximus is the biggest muscle of the human body. The gluteus maximus originates from the posterior lateral surface of the ilium and attaches onto the iliotibial band along with a small muscle called tensor fascia lata. The gluteus medius and minimus are more covered by the gluteus maximus and it arises from the same place but attaches onto the greater trochanter of the femur. Here we see a diagram of the gluteus maximus that's cut and the gluteus medius that's cut. Only then you'll be able to see the gluteus minimus. So here we see the superior gluteal nerve and superior gluteal artery that supplies both the gluteus medius and minimus along with the tensor fascia lata here. And these nerves are the inferior gluteal nerves that supplies the gluteus maximus muscle. Here we also see the piriformis muscle and this is the sciatic nerve. And note that there are arteries that supply specifically the sciatic nerve and in this diagram, we can see that the sciatic nerve arises below the piriformis after passing through the greater sciatic foramen and descend to supply the thigh muscles. Here we have a diagram of the hip bones. This is the medial side and this is the lateral side. The gluteus maximus attaches from the most medial side, whereas the gluteus minimus attaches from the most lateral side. The gluteus maximus muscles shown here is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve and the gluteus medius minimus along with the tensor fascia lata are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. And in this diagram, without cutting up the gluteus maximus, you can see parts of the gluteus medius, but you can't see the gluteus minimus because it's covered. And you can see the iliotibial tract that's formed by the combination of gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata. So clinically, why is this important? The gluteus maximus is the key muscle that's responsible for extending the hip and laterally rotating the thigh. It plays a key role in shifting from sitting to standing position and walking up the stairs. And it's the muscles that you use when you go from a squatting position to standing up. So if your gluteus maximus muscles are weak, then it'll be difficult for you to go from a sitting position to a standing position. And for gluteus medius and minimus, they are the key muscles for abducting and stabilizing the hip when walking. So in this diagram, we see that if your left leg is elevated off the ground, the gluteus medius and minimus are active to keep the foot off the ground so you can take steps. However, if your gluteus medius and minimus are paralyzed, then the hip won't be able to stay level and your foot will not be able to clear the ground when you're walking. So in medicine, when your hip droops to one side with each step you take, that's called a Trendelenburg sign. And it's seen when there's paralysis of the gluteus medius and minimus. Keep in mind that if your gluteus medius and minimus are paralyzed on the right side, then your hip will fall towards the left side. So here is a question. If you see positive Trendelenburg and the patient is drooping towards the right side, which muscles are affected? And the answer is the left 
gluteus, medius, and minimus muscles. Now, let's review the deep muscles of the hip region. We see the gluteus minimus here, and most importantly, we see the piriformis muscle that passes through the greater sciatic foramen. Below that, we have the superior gemellus muscle. Below that, we have the obturator internus muscle. Below that, we have the inferior gemellus muscle. And lastly, we have the quadratus femoris muscle. And these muscles act to stabilize the femoral head and the acetabulum. Here, we can see the nerve supply. We see the superior gluteal vein and artery that supplies the gluteus medius and maximus. We see the piriformis muscle. Below the piriformis, we have the inferior gluteal artery and vein that supplies the gluteus maximus. And here we see the sciatic nerve. As for the nerves of the deep hip region, the piriformis is supplied by the ventral rami of S1 and S2. And below we have the superior gemellus and obturator internus that's supplied by the nerve to obturator internus. And the last two muscles, the inferior gemellus and the quadratus femoris, are supplied by the nerve to quadratus femoris. Now let's learn about the hamstring muscles. The hamstring muscles originates from the ischial tuberosity, and we'll start from the most lateral side is the long head of the biceps femoris. And more medially, we have this muscle called the semitendinosus muscle. We also have the semimembranosus muscle, which as the name suggests is more like a membrane rather than a tendon. The semitendinosus and semimembranosus attach onto the tibia, whereas the long head of the biceps femoris attach onto the fibula. And these three muscles are supplied by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. And the functions are to extend at the hip joint and flex at the knee joint. You can see that the hamstring muscles pass the hip joint and also pass the knee joint, so it functions at both joints. And another muscle to learn about is the short head of the biceps femoris, and this arises from the linea aspera of the femur, but this muscle is innervated by the common fibular division of the sciatic nerve and not the tibial division. Clinically, in sports medicine, we see a lot of hamstring injuries especially in soccer players who have tear of muscles. And like most of medicine, we like to grade things. So a grade one tear will be a simple muscle strain, whereas a grade two tear is a partial rupture of the muscle, and grade three tear is a complete tear of the muscles. And hamstring injuries usually occur at the proximal attachments of the ischial to porosity. Lastly, the sciatic nerve has tibial and fibular divisions, and it's encompassed by a common sheath that puts them together. And the sciatic nerve innervates muscles of the posterior thigh, leg, foot, and skin of most of the leg and foot. Here, we can review the structure that's passing through the greater sciatic foramen. The piriformis muscle is an important landmark, because above the piriformis, you have the superior gluteal nerve and vessels and most other structures that pass below the piriformis. Notably, the inferior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal vessels, the sciatic nerve, and all these nerves and vessels. As I mentioned, the sciatic nerve has the tibial and fibular divisions, and usually it's encompassed by a common sheath. However, there are anatomical variations in which the tibial and fibular divisions are split. So in this case, we have the fibular division that comes off from the piriformis muscle or above the piriformis muscle. When these nerves are entrapped by muscle hypertrophy or due to anatomical variations, you can get pain in the buttock region, which is known as piriformis syndrome. In another clinical pearl, that we need to learn is where to inject for intramuscular injections. The gluteus maximus is a great site for intramuscular injections. You can feel the iliac crest here, and if you make four quadrants, the safest site for intramuscular injection is the superior lateral quadrant. And this site is safe because the superior gluteal nerve and the sciatic nerve are in the inferior quadrant, and if you accidentally injure these nerves, then you may have paralysis of the gluteus maximus muscle, which is not good, or you can get paralysis or damage to the sciatic nerve, which is also not very good. And a question that may arise is, how come we would do intramuscular injections here and not, for example, the del deltoid muscles? Well, you can also do intramuscular injections in the deltoid region. However, the gluteus maximus is a bigger muscle with more vessels and veins, so it allows to be a great site for absorption compared to the deltoid muscles. Hello everyone, welcome to virtual reality. Here we have the sacrum and you can see the fused coccyx which is what you normally call the tailbone. And here we have the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen at the bottom. And you can see that it's separated by the ligaments called the sacrospinous ligament. And in the greater sciatic foramen, as we mentioned, uh, the piriformis muscle passes through it along with the superior and glute inferior gluteal nerves and vessels. And here we have the ischial tuberosity, which is the attachment of hamstring muscles. And this is the biceps femoris muscle, which 
is at the most lateral side and we can see that this is the long head of the biceps femoris and you also see the short head of the biceps femoris that arise from the linea aspera and keep in mind that the long head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve whereas the short head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the common fibular branch of the sciatic nerve. And once you remove the biceps femoris muscle, we have the semitendinosus muscle on the medial side, and it attaches on the medial surface of the proximal tibia, which is a common insertion for the pes sincerinus. And remember that the pes sincerinus is comprised of sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. And what you can note about these hamstring muscles, the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, is that it attaches past the knee joint. Because it attaches past the knee joint, that's the mechanism behind how hamstrings help you to flex your knee. Now, let's move on to review the gluteal muscles. Here we have the gluteus maximus muscle, which is the largest muscle you have, and it originates from the posterior lateral surface of the ilium. And you can note that it arises from the most medial side compared to the other gluteal muscles. And remember that the gluteus maximus is the major extensor of the hip joint, so it helps you walk up the stairs. And here we have the gluteus medius and minimus, which originates from the more lateral surface of the ilium. And these are the major stabilizers of the hip. If your glutei medius and minimus are weak, then you can get a positive Trendelenburg sign in which your hip tilts or drops on the opposite side. Now let's review the deep muscles of the gluteal region. We have the piriformis muscle that comes out the greater sciatic foramen and attaches onto the greater trochanter of the femur. Its role is to laterally rotate the femur and it's innervated by the nerve to the piriformis. It's an important landmark to know because the superior gluteal nerve and vessels arise above the piriformis to supply the gluteus medius and minimus and the inferior nerve and vessels arise underneath the piriformis to supply the gluteus maximus. When we hide the piriformis, we can see the other deep muscles of the gluteal region. In order from top to down, we have the superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. The superior gemellus and obturator internus are supplied by the nerves of the obturator internus whereas the bottom two muscles, the inferior gemellus and quadratus femoris, are supplied by the nerve to the quadratus femoris. You can't see the quadratus femoris muscle here, but the function of these deep muscles are to laterally rotate the femur.